listening, going to listen to the word of God. Amen. So let us all concentrate ourselves in the presence of God and listen to the Lord and asking God, O oh Lord, speak to me, O oh Lord. We know we do not know what we need and we do not know what the people need, but God knows everybody. God knows the heart of every person and God knows what to speak and what not to speak. So this meaning, uh, this morning, I personally believe that the Lord is going to speak to us. Amen. So I, I am today, I mean, going to speak about uh, the the title uh, called I'll mean, uh, spend and be spent for God spend and be spent for God okay so that's from second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 15 second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 15 I request everyone to open your Bible and read that Bible or that portion then only uh, you will be able to understand what is the meaning of those verses and words okay so um, the title is spend and be spent for God I know today's sermon title will not be an interesting topic but I feel that I must share this with you this morning and I know I'm not good in speaking sermon on tithing or giving money or collection money all those things but I know that I mean as a pastor uh, I should speak something about the tithing or giving uh, at least once in a year I mean so there are people to speak about all those things more how you have to give the tithe to the church and uh, for the God's ministry at the same time as a pastor I have a responsibility that I should speak something about the tithing and the giving to the Lord so that is going to be the message today uh, for the people of God this morning um, uh, frankly speaking actually I am having a little different concept about tithing or giving uh, from the present day Christian churches you know that's why sometimes you know even the elders are advising me to speak something about tithe or something I'm just getting away from that because I have a have a little different concept from the Bible it's, it's, it's not from anywhere it's from the Bible that I'm going to speak and I would like to uh, make it clear that how we should give to God and how should be the tithing or how should be the offering from the Bible so it is very clearly written in the Bible that how should we give to the Lord I mean, so we have been listening today that we are receiving the blessings from God right Hello, you are not interested, I know. You are not interested to uh, listen to this message. If I am speaking something about the blessing, 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 you are so excited to hear that. <laughs> okay, no problem. So listen there. I don't want your hallelujah or praise the Lord for this because I am speaking and the Lord is giving me and I am speaking. Okay, that's it. So listen, you know, uh, we used to receive the blessing from God every time, every moment of our life we are receiving the blessings, blessings, blessings and we are praying for that. And the children of God, the brothers and sisters, they are standing there and they are sharing their testimony and they are asking our prayer and uh, I mean, maybe because of our prayer, maybe because, because of uh, God's grace that God is blessing the people and they are coming back to the church and sharing the testimony that God has blessed me with this and with that and with all those things. Everything is okay. But this morning, my question is, what are we giving back to God? What are we giving back to God? The, the topic, the title is spend and be spent for God. You may be thinking, what is that? And why Apostle Paul is writing in that way, spend and be spent or spend, be expended. Spend or be expended. Let's go to that verse maybe. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 15. And I believe that today is the day that you can take a decision that what I am going to do for the 
ministry of the Lord for the Lord. Amen. So this is the right time that you can take a decision while you are sitting in the presence of God in this church and you can take that decision. Read that verse maybe uh, uh, 2nd Corinthians chapter 12 verse 15. Yeah. more am i love am i to be loved less okay so second slide albin so paul here he is saying that you know in malayalam it is written nan adhi santoshathode ningalude jeevanu vendi chelavidugeyum chelavai pogugeyum cheyum chelavidugeyum chelavai pogugeyum cheyum i will most gladly spend and be spended be expended for your souls okay listen so apostle paul said that he is ready to spend and be expended to win souls with much gladness that means he is ready to spend what he has at the same same time he is ready to spend or be expended for the glory of god with not only with what he has but he is ready to do that that means he himself is ready to do something for the lord not because he is blessed with all the blessings or all the material blessings with him but he is saying that i am ready to spend what i have at the same time i am i mean i am so glad that i will spend for god and also i am ex expended for god i am expended myself i am submitting myself all body all spirit and all soul i am submit, submitting myself for the glory of god and i am ready to spend everything what i am receiving from the lord that means this particular verse shows shows that i mean it's a it's a holistic purpose of his life the holistic purpose of his life means what when apostle paul was sharing that i am ready to spend and i am ready to be expended that that says that the holistic life experience he is saying that i am ready with everything that i have and my body is ready and my energy is ready my strength is ready my money is ready and whatever i have even my life also i am submitting in the hands of god for the glory of god to be expended to be expended that's the meaning of that chilavaakkugeyum chilavaakkapedugeyum nammada kayilulla panam nammal chilavaakkumbol adu chilavaakkugeyana chilavaagunad enganeyana nam namme thanne deivathilekku samarpichukonde nammade jeevithathe thanne deivathinte sannidhil samarpikkapedumbodana chilavaakkapedunnathu so we are able to spend at the same time we are able to be spended or we expended okay so we are going to look into that verses again you know it was not to 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 earn something for himself or or some money uh, for himself but it was to spend what he had for god and for others that means he was finding blessedness he was finding joy and he was finding happiness when he was spending something listen very carefully he was so happy when he was spending something this is it exciting actually you know getting happiness getting joy getting excitement when spending something for the lord and for other people this is very difficult to do that you know we always are happy to receive something right we always are ready to receive something you know when we are receiving something from other people so we are i mean thanking god and especially pastors you know they thank god oh thank you lord pastor pastor will say praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord receive that money and received i mean this thing and this that thing everything i'm praising god as a pastor i mean at the same time sometimes i'm not thinking that how much i'm spending and how much i am happy how much i am joyful when i am spending what i have that means finding happiness when spending that means we must gladly spend everything that we have and spend and expend ourselves men so when we look into the new testament you know the new testament books tells us that clearly very clearly says that about the blessing in spending and being expended 
So when we are spending, there is the blessing. When we are being expended, when we are, sp when we are, I mean, being expended, then there also there is a blessing. That is what we understand. You know, um, we understand from the New Testament that a life of a believer is all about spending. Okay, the life of a believer is all about spending, especially the New Testament, New Testament church. I mean, they never promote the system of collecting and depositing or saving anything. But the Bible clearly says that you have to spend whatever you are getting. I'm coming to that point. So when I say this, okay, um, you may be thinking, okay, oh, we are collecting money for the, for what? Oh, building fund. That's great. That's great. We have to do that. We are collecting money and uh, depositing that money in the bank, whichever we get. So I was thinking about that. Why should we do that? Man? And, uh, and, uh, and the, the, the thought which came to me that, you know, spending is blessing thing. At the same time, collecting also a blessing with a good purpose. For a good cause, you can collect the money and you can save the money. Okay, I, I didn't say that, okay, we should not save any money or, uh, uh, I mean, we should not deposit any money. It's not the meaning of that. Okay, so collecting money or getting something or contributing something and if it is a, for good purpose, good cause, then that's a good thing. Okay, so we should do that. Okay, for, uh, uh, for example, when we are planning to build a church building, we have to do that. We have to collect the money for that. And if you are uh, trying to uh, buy a car or a house, okay, uh, and uh, your daughter or your son is getting married, so you have to, you have to sp spend for that and you have to, I mean, save for that, right? You have to save for that. You must do that. At the same time, the word of God is not encouraging any believer, any church, to deposit for many days or many years without any use, without any use. And if it is a good purpose, you have to do that and you have to, I mean, I mean, uh, make it possible. Otherwise, the no, Bible very clearly says that a believer must be happy when he is receiving and also he must be happy when he is spending money. When he is spending money and when he is doing something for the Lord. At the same time, you know, from my experience of ministry of 20, almost 25 years, I can say one thing this morning, that, you know, all the churches, all the believers, those who were ready to spend for the Lord, they are blessed. All the believers, every member of the church, those who were, I mean, obviously giving for the ministry of the Lord and generously giving for the ministry of the Lord, all those believers, all those children of God are blessed by God. I mean, and they did not lack anything. They have everything because they have the heart of spending. They have the heart of giving to the people. They have the heart of giving to the ministry. And also the churches, the churches which has a long desire that they have to spend. The churches, no, I'm not talking about the believer or family, but a church. Take a church. If a church is ready to spend the money what they are getting, if they are ready to spend the money they are getting, then for sure there will be a blessing of God on that church. And, you know, sometimes what is happening, the churches are not ready to spend the money. We have to spend the money. If God is giving this, giving to the church the amount or the, or the money, we have to spend that for a good cause. I mean, do it for the ministry of the Lord. I mean, I mean, use it for the glory of God in different ways. I mean, so every person, every believer, every church, I mean, then they are blessed by God and then they are ready to spend that money for the glory of God. Then that church would be a blessing church and that person will be a blessed, I mean, I mean, person, that believer would be a, I mean, great person, I mean, in the coming days. Hallelujah. So that's the reason I'm, I'm trying to, I mean, tell you that we must be willing to to spend something for the glory of God, for the ministry of the Lord. Spending, not only money. Not only money. You can spend your money. You can spend your strength. And you can I mean, spend your time. You can spend your life. Man, and all the material blessings. Whatever you are receiving from God. 
we say that okay lord thank you thank you for the house thank you for the car thank you for the i mean children thank you for that blessing thank you for this blessing it's good but at the same time how much you are using that for the name of the lord how much you are using your house how how many of you are opening your house for a prayer meeting of, i mean to 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 receive somebody at inside and i mean i mean sharing for them i mean um, if you are getting a car thank god that the lord we thank you for the car you know we we finish it with that only thank you lord for the car thank you for the for the house but the question is how much we are spending that how much we are using that material blessing for the name of the lord how much we are able to do that hallelujah this is the question you know um and uh, <clears throat> yeah so paul says in that particular verse that i am ready to give all that i have for your welfare as the father cheerfully does for his children in that particular 50, verse 15 Paul says that I am ready to do that. I mean, I what I have for your welfare. So the believers, pastors, they are, they must be ready to look after the welfare of every person. Is it possible? Welfare of every person, every believer of that church. I mean, not only thinking about our own family, not only thinking that about our own personal life, but think about the other families think about other people those who are not having that then you no know, uh, one thing let me tell you one thing that is uh, i mean it's not important that how much time or money you spend for you or your family but it's important how much you spend for others and god's ministry listen very carefully you know we are ready and we are willing to spend our money spend our time spend our energy for ourselves and our family many a times men it's not important that god is not looking okay how much you are spending time your money with your family or with your i mean friends or somebody but god is looking and it's important to think about that how much money i'm spending for others how much money i'm spending for i mean god's ministry and how much energy how much time i'm spending for god's ministry and that is the important thing that we have to consider and how much we are concerned about other people and the ministry of the lord hallelujah so we when we got to the life experience of apostle paul so in the life of experience of apostle paul we know that he had many struggles from outside and inside okay there are many references we are not going to read those verses hmm? apostle paul had different kinds of struggles and dangers from inside and outside many health issues weakness or infirmities in the midst of all the struggles when he was happily serving god and ministering to the people of god hallelujah you know he says that i have learned to be content in his in my suffering since god's power is made perfect in his weakness listen very carefully now when he was going through the struggles when apostle paul was having the struggles some situation I mean the struggles and the hardship and the persecution the weakness the healthy i mean his his health was not good he he was ha- he was having some infirmities in his health that's the reason that apostle paul was praying to god three times oh lord remove that remove that remove that but the lord said no no i'm not going to remove that but i'm going to, i'm not going to take it away but i'm going to bless you with the grace of god and my grace is sufficient for you you know even in the midst of all the struggles apostle paul was trying to get the happiness he was trying to I mean, enjoy in worshiping god and doing the ministry this is what we have to do my dear brothers and sisters think about how much we are struggling but at the same time in the midst of the struggles in the midst of the persecution in the midst of the hardness we must be ready to do something for the lord which is possible which is possible you know we have to do something for the lord you know especially let me tell you one thing think about the pastors you know you are saying that the pastors are not having any problem do you think that the pastors doesn't have any problem pastors no problem no problem more problem no no i don't have any problem <laughs> you know listen very carefully this this point you know the people
people are thinking that okay oh pastor is okay pastor doesn't have any problem especially let me tell you one thing financial issues i don't mind it no financial issues is not at all a problem for me even in my life when we start up the ministry no let me tell you one uh, when uh, one testimony to you you know when we were starting our ministry in coimbatore uh, praise and i we started that ministry uh, sometimes we were going through the hard situation and after the marriage is the first day we took a decision that uh, we will do one thing we will not ask anything from our homes okay so my family and praise's family also uh, not that much well to do family but a medium family if we ask something to the family members or parents they will give something but we took a decision no we are not going to ask anything from uh, our parents or our siblings uh, no problem god will provide everything you know we had to go through many difficult situations many hardship in our life but even in that time also we sat in the presence of god and we have been praying in the presence of god god provided in the right time the right person god has provided and we thank the lord for that even in the midst of the struggles when god provided everything for us we we are spending we were ready to spend from that for the ministry of the lord whatever we were getting we were ready to spend out of that for the ministry of the lord Well, this is my experience you know let me tell you one more thing you know most of the time the pastors they never uh, share their troubles or their sufferings or their problems with the with the believers with their believers with the families because that is like that eh? so if they say that you know you will say okay oh pastor we didn't know that okay we will help you we will support you we will encourage you that's good that's good at the same time the pastors also i know this is my personal conviction pastors must learn how to live without money also pastors must learn how to live by faith this is my conviction okay by faith so that's the reason i am not asking anybody give me something give me something give me said no no this is cheapest thing that in this world that the pastors are going there and here and asking money from the believers or money from the families you know i personally believe that you know the thing is you know even in the midst of you know pastors have many other problems you know many many other i mean family problems so from 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 uh, their native place there will be many problems there are many problems if even though the pastors are having many struggles and many sufferings and many problems if a family is calling pastor we are suffering with this and just come and pray we will come there we will come there because the pastor will come there because he cannot say that okay i am not feeling well and i'm i'm not okay so i will not come there i will not say that because whatever it may be you are in a need okay the believer is in a need the pastor the family is in a need then the pastor is ready to go there because even if in the midst of the struggles and the sufferings he is ready to do that because that is the ministry of the lord which is entrusted upon the pastor that's my personal belief I mean so this is what is happening sometimes you know even though we have some struggles or sufferings no problem let us overcome that by doing and spending something for other people we can do that we can do that right i mean you know let me give you one uh, one example from uh, you know i was thinking you know i was uh, just saying emotional and saying that okay, you know i don't i don't uh, mind about the the financial thing uh, never mind about that okay so that is nothing for me uh, finance is not a problem for me money is not a problem me whatever you are, you are giving me or whatever you are, i am getting i'm spending more than that to the ministry of the lord in different places okay so it doesn't matter for me and i know that god will provide everything okay i am not worried about all those things i mean everything that i need or for my family need god has provided everything so i am not after the financial thing i am not after the money but i am trusting in the lord i am living in this world i am doing my ministry so you know uh, one experience i will share with you okay so what is that uh, uh, when we were uh, ministering in uh, in uh, um, kerala sorry uh, karnataka so karnataka so when uh, we used to go to the villages you know uh, we were going by bike okay the bike here there it is motor bike okay so we were going by the motor bike and uh, when we were going to the to the village there was no rain but when we were coming back 
it was raining it was drizzling and uh, we didn't know that uh, there was a there was a there was a hole in the road in 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 india it is usual no everywhere there will be a hole <laughs> in in the, in the midst of the the road so there was a hole and we were not knowing that there is a, there is a hole and uh, uh, what happened was uh, in front of us there was a jeep or car and it was drizzling and uh, we were having the helmet but we were just i was driving and all of a sudden uh, the first wheel of the motorbike uh, uh, fell into the into the hole and we just fell down there okay like this you know uh, to, to 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 the friend and i was hit by my chest okay and praise also was there both of us we just i mean uh, fell down in that road but god protected us okay god protected us and nothing happened to us at the same time i was not able to wake up from there i was not able to kick my uh, a bike to start i was not able to do that when somebody else came and they just picked up the the bike and said okay uh, yes 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 man you can go now and what happened you know my um, uh, you know band uh, it was it was teared and it was, it became dirty and we were not i mean able to use that band again you know so the thing is just after that we went to a home changed the dress and we went to the another place listen we we had that experience just after that we went to the house changed our pant and dress and everything and we went to the other other house it was also a village house so they were expecting us there that means you know i cannot say that i cannot come there because i am I'm, i'm fallen and i fell down i cannot come there i did not say anything to those people we just go there and we just pray for that family so this is the ministry that we are doing at the same time let me tell you one thing you know i'm talking about me and a pastor but same time you can also do many things for the lord according to the word of god it says that even though you are going through the struggles even though you are going through the struggles and the difficult situation god can use you spend spend what you have if it is the money spend that money if you have the life energy strength spend that for the name of the lord if you have time spend the time for the lord for the ministry if you have a car use it for the glory of god if you have a house use it for the glory of god if you have a child use him or use her for the name of the lord hallelujah whatever you have the holistic purpose of a christian's life is praising god and spending 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 amen <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Many a times what is happening? You know, the people are expecting appreciation from other people, right? Appreciation. Okay. So, when, when we do something that, okay, so that person, this person, I mean, should appreciate me. All the other people should appreciate me. You know, uh, sometimes, you know, when I'm, I'm, I'm preaching a sermon, after the sermon, somebody, usually somebody will come to me and say, Oh, Pastor, that was a wonderful message. I said thank you praise god you know some people will say ah oh, pastor was that was not no, that was a good message but but uh, okay you know with a with a good intention somebody will say oh pastor that touched me i praise the lord for that because when when i preaching you know i don't expect anything from the people you now when i preach i don't expect appreciation or something you know even if you don't appreciate also i have no problem please leave it okay so i am preaching the word of god if you appreciate or not that is not a matter for me at the same time you know when we you know the people those who are not appreciated and they are saying no 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 you didn't appreciate me you didn't respect me no no it's not happening in the church no it will not happen always don't expect any appreciation when you are spending something okay when you are spending something spending money spending time spending your energy no expectation of appreciation but you are doing it for the name of the lord hallelujah hallelujah you know when you look into the the religious people outside you know they are always expecting something from their from their believers and grabbing from others but the christian people the christian churches i mean are supplying to other people listen you no know, the other religious people even the other christian people you know outside they are trying to grab the people the, the believers okay they are expecting the money from the people from the believers but the christian churches like us 
ELC. No, for, uh, proudly I can say that the ELC is not grabbing anything from the believers. But I mean, with the heart, with the heart, when they are giving to the church, we are so happy. It's not we are not grabbing or we are not, I mean, a compulsory saying, okay, you have to give, you have to give, you have to give. That's the reason I said, I, mean, I have a different concept about the tithing. Okay, we are not compelling anyone to give tithe. We are not compelling anyone. It is there in the membership form or the book. But, you know, we are not compelling anyone, but you can give. The people will give when they are encouraged by the word of God. The people will give when they are encouraged the word of God. I mean, so, you know, when, when we study about the giving in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Old Testament is very strict about the tithe. Listen. The Old Testament is very strict about the tithe. Even when you read uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, um, Genesis, um, I forgot the, the, the chapter. Yes. Yeah, Genesis chapter 14 verse 20. No need to read. No time. Okay. Genesis chapter 14 verse 20. We read that Abraham was giving the tithe to Melchizedek. Abraham giving tithe to Melchizedek. And again, you know, it is, tithe means what? 10%. 10%. Okay. So in Deuteronomy chapter 14 verses 22 and 23, we read that, you know, I mean, uh, uh, not money, because not working in their careers, we have to understand that, you know, there are many laws about the tithing in the Old Testament. You know, they are not giving money. The Old Testament people, the people of Israel, they were not giving money as a tithe, because they, they, they didn't have the money there. But they are working in the farm or in the field, okay? So whatever they are bringing, okay, read that verse maybe, 14 verse 22. You shall tithe all the yield of your seed that comes from the field year by year. And before the Lord your God in the place that he will choose to make his name dwell there, you shall eat the tithe of your grain, of your wine, of your oil, and the firstborn of your herd and flock, and you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. Okay, the, the Old Testament people, when they were tithing, when they were tithing, you know, they were they are giving something out of their farm or field. What is that? They brought grain, they brought wine, they brought oil, they brought firstborn of the flock, maybe a chicken or vegetable items or something from the field. They are giving everything for the Lord. They are not giving money. But here, you know, in our situation, we are not giving all those things, right? We are not bringing a chicken, a chicken into the church, or we are not bringing any grain or oil or into, into the church, but we are giving money as a tithe. Okay, this is the practice now. You know? But in, in Karnataka, when we were ministering there, the people used to bring all the items from their field and uh, from their chicken farm and everything. They are, bringing one, they are coming to the church with a, with a chicken. Okay, with the chicken they are coming to the church and, the, and they are bringing into the friend. Putting there in the, in front of the pulpit. And they are saying, Pastor, this is for you. Or this is for the church. You know, I have to take that chicken after the service <laughs> to home. So it's a blessed thing, you know. Actually it's a blessing thing. So I believe that the, those people are like that only. They will bring everything, whatever they have at their house. Small houses, small tents, small tent. So whatever they have, they are working in the field. Okay, they are bringing some grain or they are bringing some rice. Okay, whatever maybe what they have, they used to bring. So in the Old Testament, the people were not bringing anything, the money or something, but they were bringing something. Now ten percent of everything that they had. Everything that they had, okay, all the things, the items which they are getting from the field or the farm, okay, you know, uh, you have to think that the purpose of making law about the tithe in the Old Testament was uh, different, that is in uh, verse 23, 1423, it says that to teach them, God must be given the first priority. God must be given the first priority. That was the main reason that in the Old Testament, God established the tithing system. Amen? So, but in the New Testament, it is very different. Different, You know, in the Old Testament, they were trying to, sometimes they were trying to put 
some other things instead of God. So I know that I, I will not be able to, I mean, complete today's message, this message, but if possible, to, next week we have the gender body, right? Okay. So, yeah. So, so only, only a few minutes will be getting, right? Next week. Total one hour. So, half an hour will get. Okay, that's enough. Okay, I'll complete <laughs> maybe next week because today I cannot complete all those portions because I have many verses to read. Then only you will understand what is the meaning of giving and spending. So, we are coming to that point. Listen, so, you know, Apostle Paul also is, I mean, interestingly saying that, yes, I am ready for doing something. I am ready to spend something for God and his purpose mainly was to soul winning, right? Winning soul. Okay, this is the main point that we are, I'm come to, going to come to that point. Then you know, when they were giving tithe to God, they were the, the, the Old Testament believers were, I mean, giving first priority to God. Read that verse 23. 1423. Yeah. And before the Lord your God in the place that he will choose to make his name dwell there, ah. you shall eat the tithe of your grain, of your wine, of your oil, and the firstborn of your herd and flock, and that, that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. In order to teach them that, how to fear God, and how to give priority for the Lord, priority for the Lord, you know, otherwise what they will do? Eh? Okay, getting, receiving all these things, all the grain and all the, I mean, all the things from the field and all the vegetable and all other things and the flock and the sheep and all those things are there. But these people are not giving importance for God if they are just, I mean, going away from there and just giving, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's it. That's it. Okay. If they are giving, thank you, Lord, for everything and going away for their purpose. You know, it will not work out. And God said, no, 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 you have to give priority to God. We, are, we will be going into the New Testament if God allows next week. Okay, I am speaking from the Old Testament now. That when we are receiving from the Lord, at least we have to give the tithe. At least we have to give the 10% the, the, the of that what we are getting from the Lord. I mean, not, all, not only the money, whatever things that we are getting from the Lord, we have to spend that. Okay? You will be able to spend the money only here, but you can use your energy, you can use your strength, you can use your life itself. That's the reason Apostle Paul said, I'm ready to spend something, at the same time, I'm ready to be expended. That means with our life, number Jeeva than Gunda than I'm in the Anam, Kartavan we ain't spendy in our Arikanam. Well, number Kaila Panam Matra Gurukan or Allah, I mean, whatever we are getting, the life and the energy, the strength and all the material blessings and the facilities, whatever it may be, I mean, we having all those things in our lives and we are thanking God at the same time. How many of you are getting ready to, I mean, give everything for the Lord and giving, I mean, not only the per, I mean, 10%, not only, I mean, I mean, whatever we are getting of you know, the tight or something but we must be ready to give importance for the Lord or give importance for the Lord in in New Testament it's different that's what I'm going to share I mean next week I mean don't miss that message also okay so let us all commit us with the mighty hand of God this morning let us also pray that as pray I mean I mean Apostle Paul prayed what did he pray what did he pray? He prayed, Oh Lord, I'm ready, O oh Lord. I'm ready, O oh Lord. He was submitting himself in the hands of God and saying, Oh Lord, I'm having that purpose in my life. The holistic purpose of a believer. What is that? Winning the souls. Winning the souls. Why? You and I are giving money to the Lord. Money to the church. Why? You are offering your offerings into the church. Why? You are offering your tithe into the church. Because the church is doing the ministry of the Lord. Men, the, the task of the church is winning the souls. Hallelujah. So Apostle Paul was sharing that only. That he was sharing, I mean, I am, I mean, I am planning and I am having that desire in my heart for the welfare of the people. That means, I have a burden in my heart to win the souls. There are many perishing souls, dear ones. I mean, there are many perishing souls. I mean, there will be some families and the people, those who are having difficult situation in their life and they will be coming into the church. Are we ready to share for them? Are we ready to support them? Are we ready to engrace those people with what we have? If not, you and I am not a believer of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. The New Testament church, the early church, the New Testament Bible, the apostles, the disciples, all the pastors, they were teaching all the people that whatever you are receiving from the Lord, you have to give back to the Lord. Because it is not because of your power. It is not because of your strength. It is not because of your education. It is not because of your anything from you that you have received all those things. Only, only, only the grace of God. Hallelujah. This morning, how many of you are taking a decision? Oh Lord, we thank you for everything that we have. At the same time, I am taking a new decision that I will spend. I will spend what I have. At the same time, I will be expended. Kartave, chalavakuanum, chalavaguanum. Yangada kairula, the Yunamatin with chalavakuan matramala, yangaletane, chalavaku padeta than I, summer pican, kartave and tayaragunu, in the Traverka Pratikan Kayim. Hallelujah. Just like, I mean, God was teaching the Old Testament people that how you should give the first priority to God. I mean, we will be having many needs in our lives. I mean, we are separating that amount for many, many, many other things. At the same time, how many of you are thinking about how important is giving, how important is spending in your life? How many of you are, I mean, finding joy and happiness in your life when you are spending something? When you are spending something, find joy and happiness and blessedness when you are spending something for others and for the ministry of the Lord more than receiving or getting from others. Other people. Let us all submit ourselves in the mighty hand of God.